now it's time to have a very strong black coffee. The reason for this is the caffeine is known to harden, give the muscles a more hardened look. It doesn't help that it's really late at night. It's now 25 to 12. Never mind. Hopefully it doesn't keep me up. So yeah, this is lasting anyway before tomorrow. So yeah, tomorrow's the day. If you thought I could just use any old water for my coffee, then you're wrong. Right, so got my vitamin C. This needs to be very strong, apparently. Oh, God. I'll go two and a half and try not to throw up. Oh my god, that's strong. But I don't think I'm going to be able to drink this. I don't think I'm going to be able to drink this. Oh my word. Vitamin C. I've <laughs> come a long way, <laughs> but it's all over now, nearly. So. Yo, <clears throat> competition day. Just been on a wild hunt for turkey as the turkey I cooked, as I said before. The one kilo of turkey I cooked was with salt. Wasn't allowed, I'm not allowed to use salt. So, had to go and find some turkey. Tesco Express, you suck. Sainsbury's Local, you suck. Co-op, you suck. <sighs> mm. Had to go to the big Sainsbury's, get myself some turkey, come back home. So, the time is 10 past eight. I wanna check in at about 10 o'clock. So I'm gonna leave my house at nine. Meal one. Bit of steak, scrambled egg, turkey for the day. I can do it. I can do it. I still haven't done my hair removal. I still haven't exfoliated. I'm better than this. Done. Okay, so en route to the Olympia now. It's half past nine. I'm late. I'll still make check in, but I'm behind and I annoyed for myself. Nobody else to blame. I take full responsibility. Doing my hair removal and exfoliating this morning was 
just long as always. Um, I even managed to get some hair removal in my hair and now I have a bald patch. But we're not going to talk about that. So, Debbie's giving me a lift to uh, the underground station. It's going to take me 40 minutes to get there apparently. And it's half past nine. Registration closes at 11, so an hour and a half from now. I should be okay. Okay. This journey needs to go as swiftly as possible. Cyclists piss off. Oops, excuse my language. All right, catch you guys at the Olympia. The train leaves at 10.01. There's one here. Made it. Actually, I don't know if it's a good idea getting a time before Dominican Republic, but never mind. Here now. now this is competition that I'm going up against I guess everybody else back here um, yeah ready ready to go ready 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 so it's time to get vascular Come 
lives. This determines the final of all acts. So I'm educated. It's very important that you can see the numbers. There's no clenched fists. And you're making it easy for the judges to make a correct decision. So, the aim is to be top fives. You should be awarding your call there. that wasn't called back for top three so I either came fourth or fifth yeah it wasn't really my day um, I wasn't looking my best at all um, and that's just how it goes sometimes that's just how th that's men's physique if you're not looking like you should look, you're not bringing that condition, that size, uh, looking dry, and other people obviously are, and they know how to pose. Uh, you can see in the videos a few people that need help with their posing, um, maybe haven't seen as much uh, of the pros as some of us. I don't know, it just depends on how much time you spend watching uh, watching the sport in general I guess um, whether it be in the UK or in other international competitions or even the Olympia stage uh, the most prestigious stage uh, there is but yeah just really wasn't my day it was a very long and grueling prep but to be honest I wasn't ready at the end of the day I really wasn't oh by the way absolutely no excuses by the way uh, I didn't win because I did not look good enough my condition wasn't good enough 
Um, that's what really comes down to uh, shape and size. I think I held my own. Um, I could be a bit bigger in certain areas or whatever. That's how everyone will always see it. But um, weaker areas obviously can be brought up, and um, that's what I'm training on right now for the next time I compete. Uh, but in terms of the last competition, it's just conditioning. I didn't give myself one enough time. There's always time. Um, if you are not looking how you're supposed to look, you should have just started dieting sooner. Simple as that. But having taken full responsibility for not giving myself enough time and not taking it as seriously as I should have done, it's definitely down to myself to learn from that and pick up for next time. Um, as you guys know, the whole vlog was called Road to Fitcon slash Dominican. The way it came about was I had a holiday booked to Dominican and what I decided was that I was going to look at the calendar of when there was a competition nearby and just compete in it, obviously before I flew out to Dominican. So FitCon was two days before I went to Dominican and I thought that I could basically prep for a show with the holiday as motivation, which is fine, but it was nowhere near enough. Uh, what I did was stupidly assume that I could just do that by itself and it wasn't enough. Um, my best friend said to me, if I'm going to do it, don't think about the holiday at all. It's a prep, it's a show. That's the most the most important part of it. Um, the more serious part, obviously. Um, the holiday comes second, literally. And I quite clearly did not take that on board. So, mistakes were made, and that's just what happened, really. Um, for next time, I definitely will either prep for a show or I'll prep for a holiday, one or the other. I'm not going to just pick a show. I'm not gonna book a holiday and then look at the calendar, find a show and say, okay, I'm gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that again. Next time I compete, I will just be competing and that's it. So if you recall, um, about three weeks out, I had my course at college and I was having to travel uh, some distance uh, East London, outside East London towards Essex to study that. So I didn't manage to get as much training in, I didn't manage to get hardly any cardios in that week and it was just a really, really awkward time to have that three weeks out of the competition. That didn't help. Again, not pointing fingers, it's me. I chose to compete at that date. The availability of my course is down to them. It's when they have the week slots for me to go in and complete the practical assessments that I need to do. Um, thankfully, I've completed that now anyway, so that's out of the way. But still, I know for next time, definitely won't be doing that again. So for next prep, um, things I do differently like I said, definitely focus on one thing and one thing only, and that is the competition. Doesn't matter what else is going on. You can't afford to be have your attention anywhere else. It's too it's too time consuming. You can't balance it with anything else. People just about manage to balance competing with everyday things like work. When I did my qualifier in 2016, I remember taking peak week off work purely because of how much water I was drinking. So, you can, you know, do you know what I mean? It can be anything, tiredness, you just can't. I mean, I'm, I was on a building site, I'm an electrician, or trainee electrician, and I'm carrying things pretty much all day, it's manual labor, that on top of just all day is just a really long and grueling procedure with competing on top. So it's just hard to balance out really. Also, another thing I'll do the next time I compete is see a physio, uh, sports physio, a lot more often, maybe even up to 
three times a month. I was only seeing, I think, I was seeing Anna, uh, the former sports physio at Yorkies, only maybe once a month or so. Lucky if I can remember correctly. Um, I did vlog that, by the way, but it was my old camera and it decided to just pass out after about five minutes. Anyway, more sports physio, increased flexibility, improved conditioning, um, overall will increase my gym performance. So obviously in the long run, works out better for myself. I pretty much tracked everything else that I was doing at the time. Diet wise, nutrition, did everything coach said. There's a one slip up that I made uh, at the end where coach wanted me to switch to boiled brown rice and I carried on eating my packet rice. She made me go to the gym and <laughs> sweat that out on the tre <laughs> on the treadmill for about 40 minutes, 45 minutes. It's you may think that's really small and petty, but it was packet rice I had. There's preservatives in there, there's oils in there to keep the rice and she just wanted me to be bone dry and just stick to her old school rituals, which I 100% agree with. And that's what I love about her coaching. So I was more than willing to, to do that. Obviously the day before the show, that's in my mindset at the time, I was stressed, but needed to be done. Also, the next time I compete, I will definitely be experimenting with water and salt manipulation. I genuinely don't think I've ever competed at my very, very best. It's going to be easy to say that. What I mean is, due to all the protocols that I've tried in the past, I've always felt better on a random, say, high carb day two weeks prior to competing. Uh, it will come to the day and I will be on stage, or sorry, backstage, getting ready to go on stage and how I'm trying to pump up and what I've had to carb up is just not working and I, for some reason, only just figured out really what it is that I've been doing wrong all this time. But saying that, I spoke to coach about it and the next time I compete, I'm gonna do two competitions, um, one week apart, and do what I've been doing this whole time for the first competition and then for the second competition, try what I think is going to work. And it's one is going to be manipulating salt and water and the other is going to be not touching it at all and leaving it in. Um, it literally just comes off the back of in the past having, like I said, a high carb day two weeks prior. And the only thing difference to that high carb day to the one I have when front loading my carbs before I compete is my water's the same and my sodium, my salt is exactly the same. I've not changed them. They are whatever they've been at that point, uh, four grams, five grams of salt, uh, three, four, five six liters of water up to seven and i literally just have more carbs than i've had up to that point say i've been on maybe 150 or 120 grams of carbs a day either 75 or 60 pre then the other 75 or 60 post workout then a random spike up to 300 grams of carbs that's the only thing that changes and literally the pump that I get from that session is just the best that I've that I've felt and I don't know why I'm not doing that going into a competition so that's what we're going to try uh, the next time I compete my subs have pretty much been the same since I met coach she's the one who recommended to me animal products so not actual animal products is the name of uh, the brand for fat burners animal cuts best thing I've had definitely got me down to single digit fat uh, percentages uh, the fastest I guess um, 
that I've I've come across. Animal cuts, um, animal pack is a vitamin pack. I uh, was on that as well. Um, Animal stack and M stack. I always get confused between the two. Which ones are pre and post workout? It's a lot of subs. To be fair, there is it, the cost is up there. You know, you've that's another thing as well. If you're competing, it's very costly, very costly to compete. Uh, you've got to be willing to to spend that money, I guess. But what I am spending my money on those supplements, also Udo's oil. Uh, where I get my fats from, omega three, six, and nine. Countless kilos of chicken breast. It, it all adds up. If I was to actually add it up from start of prep to the end of prep, I would probably throw up. Yeah. But it's all worth it. I, I enjoy competing, and it's just what needs to be done to get to that stage. All hobbies cost. It just, this is the price of this hobby and I enjoy it, so that's what I do. I'll drop a link uh, in the bio of this video for all the supplements that I've purchased so you guys can check them out yourselves uh, if you wish. Uh, I'm trying to think of any, any other supplements that I was taking. I recommend definitely BCAs. They just gave me a good energy boost. Well, I say that. that specific ones so optimum nutrition do bcas called train and sustain uh that's that's a pretty good one it's to me semi feels like a pre-workout mixed in with the bcas um it has an anti-fatigue agent in there i'm not even sure what the ingredient is but it works for me because after work when i'm shattered and i take a sachet of that um i'm ready <laughs> That on top of my pre-workouts, uh, animal stack, I think it is. I might get that wrong. Um, yeah, I'm all good to go because because when you get down to, like I said, 120, 150 grams of carbs a day, you're dying. Do you know what I mean? It's like you're just dragging yourself everywhere you go. So yeah, I'll leave the link in the bio. Next question is, when is your next comp? So, I do have a date for my next competition, but I'm not gonna say when. <laughs> Purely because I'm not vlogging it the same way I did this series. What I'm gonna do is, what I discussed earlier, compare the two peak weeks. Um, one, because I find it very easy to just vlog how I did before you literally are joining me in the one hour session or however long it takes uh, that coach takes me through, that Ash takes me through or Mark takes me through. Don't get me wrong, um, training videos are definitely the way that I want my vlog to go and what I want it to be about. Um, sharing what I feel is the best way to train a particular body part or get the best results from doing one exercise in comparison to another, whatever. Uh, that's what I want my channel to be about, along with other things, but when we're talking training specific, it's not the way that I really want to vlog. I think it's a bit too, it gets a bit repetitive. Uh, you guys just watching me train back, then train chest, then train legs, then back, train legs, chest, whatever. You get to see how I do it at different points of prep, yes, but I'd rather this time round anyway, um, show you this part of peak week, which is a lot more, I find it a lot more interesting, to be honest, the changes that happen throughout the week and just those final parts getting stage ready. Uh, I think people find will find that a lot more interesting than just watching me train day in, day out. Um, and also, I can bring the science into it and actually prove to myself what works for me, what finally works for me. So I can learn from it myself as well as show you guys what works for me. You can try it out yourself. I don't know which which would work for you. The manipulation of the salt, water, both, whatever. But in my next vlog, that is exactly what I'm going to 
establish for myself. And I'm excited about it, to be honest. Um, that's what I've been wanting to figure out for a very long time. It obviously just takes a long time to get there, to get down to that level of body fat, to then stay at that body fat, just to manipulate those things. It's quite a lot to ask just for that purpose. So yes, I am gonna compete again, and that is what I'm gonna be vlogging next. There'll be some sessions that I do vlog. Um, I will get some in there with uh, my older cousin, Lee. Uh, he'll be coming down to Yorkies and taking some vids of me. Um, and we'll get some good training vids in. Um, I'll probably be doing things like my top three back exercises, top three arms, chest, legs, that kind of thing. But in terms of my actual vlog for these competitions, it's going to be peak week. So we'll see what that's like. Other than that, that's it really. Today is Friday 13th of July. It's been April to April, June, July. It's been 14 months since FitCon and Dominican. April to April, June, July is definitely forgetting about May. Okay, so uh, actually 15 months. Idiot. It's taking me all this time to get to here. I apologize for that, but it's <laughs> been a bit hectic. Um, just finding time to, to edit, I guess, vlogging. This is my first ever series, so thank you for being patient and thank you for watching, obviously. And yeah, there'll be more to come, so stay tuned and until next time. Oh, well, the actual road to Dominican is the next vlog I'm going to be doing. So keep a lookout for that one. And yeah, until next time, really. Peace.